So we're, we're uh, studying out of Joshua chapter one. This, uh, you know, God gives us seasons where sometimes you're in a season of uh, great, great victory, but there's other seasons where it seems like the enemy's winning in your life. It seems like there's sickness and poverty or, or, or conflict or whatever. And what I wanna talk about is how you can get into that new promised land. And what do you need to get there? So what do you need to start a new company? What do you need to turn your family around? What do you need to see change in your personal life? What do you need to lose weight? What do you need to get healthier? Every step of the way, you should be asking yourself, number one, where do I wanna go and what do I need to get there? Where does my church need to go and what does it need to get there? Dana didn't know that was something that's been on our heart. God put it on his heart. We, need, we needed that vehicle to be able to reach those people for Christ. We moved the Dream Center to South Campus and now it's, it's seriously the impact they're making. I'm gonna have to bring Frank in the next couple of weeks because he's gotta tell the stories about the thousands and thousands of lives that are being impacted at, their, at our Dream Center. Metro police calls us when there's a murder. We walk door to door with Metro. I've never seen this ever in my entire life where the city works so closely with a church like ours. That's to the glory of God. But you have to understand John Ponder starting a brand new, John and Jamie are starting a brand new class this week of prisoner reentry, which will one day be national. John and Jamie, stand up please. Come on, I want you to pray for them this week. I want you to pray for them this week. See, what you have to understand is real Christianity is relevant. It will, change, it will win souls, it will disciple nations, it will feed the homeless, it will take care of the moms, and, and, and it, will, it will do things. Real Christianity is active. What we have developed in America is a entertainment Christianity. But that's not true around the world. Real Christianity is active, and I'd even say it's proactive. So Joshua chapter one, what do you need to possess new land and the promised land? Joshua 1, 6, be strong and brave. You, everybody say, be strong and brave. Be strong and brave. You must lead these people, you must, you must, not you should, it would be nice. You must lead these people in the conquest. So you lead people into, their, into them winning their victories. You can't do it for them. You ever notice that you can't make people better? You ever notice that you can't make people change? You can only influence them? So you lead them into their ability to have a conquest. It's big. You can't make your kids do stuff. As they grow older, you'll discover that. You can be the best parent in the world, but you can finally realize, man, these kids can make their own decisions. And you may have married that man thinking you could change it, but you've just given up. <laughs> you threw in the towel and you tapped out. You can't change that man. God won't even force that change. He gave us all free will. So it says here, you must lead them in the conquest of this land. In other words, you lead them to it you can't, you know, you, they say you can what? Bring a horse to water, you can't make him drink. That's the principle here. So, so let that sink into you for, for a second. That I, was saw, that I saw, solemnly promised their ancestors. I solemnly promised. All right, I want to tell you what the word there means, the Greek word there. It's a, it's a powerful word. It's a solemn oath. God made a, an oath and said, now lead these people so they can claim the oath that I solemnly swore to them. You know what Hebrew word there is? Shaba. Everybody say Shaba. How many ever heard of Heidi Baker? That's her favorite word. I, I don't even know if she knows what it means. I, she's always just said, I thought, it was, I thought she was just speaking in tongues. But the word Shaba means a solemn oath from God. Shaba. How many want to live God's promises for our life? Say Shaba. Every time you say Shaba, you're declaring God has a promise for you and your family. God has a promise for this church. God has a problem for the city. God has a problem for our nation. Whenever you say Shaba, I'm going to make t-shirts that say Shaba. I'm going to make coffee cups that say Shaba. I'm telling you because it rocked me when I saw that. I go, I didn't know that's what it meant. 
It means a solemn promise of God. So you lead the people in to conquest the land as was solemnly sworn by God. Let me ask you a question. What promises are there for you and your family, your church, your business that you're not yet living? Do you know there's some solemn promises that God gave to your mom and dad, they never lived it out? It's waiting for you to claim. Did you know that? Did you know there's promises on your family name that were never claimed for 400 years and it's still waiting for that promise, for that name to change and for it to become the name that you help create? Do you understand what I'm saying? I believe that God has solemn promises for every one of us that we've not yet claimed. So I started doing this. I started going back into my family name and their history. I started claiming some things that were not yet claimed. And I said, God, I claim that for my life. Plus, I had to cancel curses. There's a curse of strokes in my family. There's a curse of high blood pressure. And unfortunately, I'm dealing with that right now, Annie. And I said, I curse that thing in Jesus' name. But I open up the flow of creativity. My, fa- my grandfather helped start the first aviation school in Montreal. That was my grandfather. One of my great-great-grandfathers was one of the first postmen of Canada. That's one of my great greats. So I have an innovative family that starts things. So I, I started claiming I'm going to start things. And so I started Top Leader VT that, that's going to be coming out with more courses and more exclusive interviews because I believe I'm supposed to start things. That's what I love to do. I love to start things. So what do you need to possess the promises that God has for you? Everybody say Shabbat. What are you going to say? That means what? You're going to claim the promises that are for you and for your family that may have been neglected for 400 years. It's time to lead your family and your business into the promised land. It's time to lead your basketball team into the promised land. It's time for leadership. Guess what? Leadership takes courage. That's why he says be bold and strong, and that's exactly what it means. It means you've got to be strong and courageous. That's literally what the Hebrew means. Everybody say strong. Now, here's the other thing is, it's a commandment. I was studying the commentaries. It's not a suggestion. It's a commandment. Be strong. Well, I just don't feel strong. I'm discouraged. I'm so weak. Choose to change. You choose. No one else is going to choose it for you. Have you ever told somebody, oh, man, you look beautiful today? No, I don't. I don't look beautiful. I'm fat. I'm ugly. I'm stupid. No, you, you've, you've done that before. You've told people things, but they refuse to accept it. So God tells Joshua, who's been stuck for 40 years, you, buddy, be bold and courageous, strong. Your, your leader is dead. Now buck up, buddy, and you lead the way. I, I had a chance to share with the men yesterday morning, and I said, guess what, men? You were born for this. Men are not supposed to be wusses. Men, we're not supposed to be a bunch of wussies. We're not supposed to be, well, whatever, whatever, whatever. No, I'm going to church today. Come on. Well, my 13-year-old is running the home. Well, you, you know, become a man. And ladies, if you're not married, guess what? God's going to give you some extra testosterone to make it through your tough times. You might have to pull up some hairs or something like that, but. (laughs) That's why we're a family. None of us are complete without each other. If you're a single mom, that's why you're in a church, so you have Royal Rangers. I used to be a big proponent of uh, Boy Scouts. My goodness, they've made some decisions recently that literally are risking the the sexual identities of these little boys and and uh, opening up the door to pedophilia. I used to deal with pedophilia. It was one of the biggest things I dealt with because when I moved to Vermont, I had my first 10 counseling appointments, my 10 first clients, nine of them had been sexually molested. Nine out of 10. Massive problem in Vermont. And so now Boy Scouts are opening that up to whatever you know the rulings that are going out there. See, but Joshua needed encouragement. Why? Because everyone needs encouragement. Look at someone say, oh, you're amazing. Look at them right now. Say, you're amazing. Amazing. Husbands, any husbands here? Lift up your hands. Look Look at your wife and say, you're so sexy. 
and beautiful. And ladies, look at your husband and say, you're a man. <laughs> See, some of you are waiting for your ship to come in. It's time to be bold and strong and do something decisive. We have KSM sign up today. That's our school of ministry. You can get your bachelor's degree in education, you can get your bachelor's degree in Christian counseling, Christian counseling, and then your master's. We actually have a Christian master's program here in our town, which we can plug you into that because we're part of it, our, our counseling center is. Or you can just get involved in pastoral ministry or worship, whatever. Part of our worship teams and learning how to lead worship and stuff. Quit waiting on your ship to come in, swim out and sign up. Well, I don't have the money. No, you don't have the guts. Come on, now let's be men and, and let's be godly women. Deborahs. See, I don't believe women are supposed to be strong either. My wife's strong. She's a Deborah. I believe we're raising up a generation of Deborahs. We've got to raise up a generation of great men and great women that are bold, that are standing up. He needed strength and courage. God spoke it. What do you need? Maybe you need more strength and courage. And God wants to give it to you because he doesn't want you to stay just here. There is a better place for you and your family. And there is a better place for our church. And there is a better place for our city and our state and our nation. There, someone say there's a better place. All right, and it's been promised to us. Say it's promised. Okay, now what's the Hebrew word? That's pretty good. That's not bad. Everybody say what? Oh, I like that. So every time this week you say Shabbat, you're reminding yourself that there's a problem of a better place, a, a promise of a better place for everyone here. Now, God is speaking to you today. And I'm speaking to you as his mouthpiece for you. It's time to be strong and courageous and get and do that next step. Go for counseling. Quit being a chicken. Ask for forgiveness if you've messed up. Quit being a wuss. I am your pastor. I am your leader. And I'm speaking to you as God spoke to me. Paul, you can wallow in your self-pity. You can feel bad about the fact that you've got a hole in your brain right now. You can feel bad about all those things and you've grieved enough. It's time, Paul. Buck up, buddy. Let's go. Let's go to town. You're going to let the enemy beat you up? You're going to let the enemy uh, cause you to be fearful? No, Goulet, step up. So I've been getting this word, I'm transferring it to you, Sha. If you don't like what you're hearing, blame it on God. Someone say amen. No more victim mentality. Now there's times we're gonna grieve, yes. But sometimes, it's, at some point, you're gonna have to be strong and courageous. Gotta go for counseling, go for counseling. You wanna run for office, run for office. You wanna start a business, start a business. You only got one life. I just don't want to live in regrets one day. One day when I meet God face to face, whatever their age that's going to be, I just don't want to have regrets. Oh, I could have, should have, would have. I was afraid I didn't do that. It was too risky. Come on now. You've never been to growth groups on Wednesday night? Go to growth groups. I, I know it's scary to go and meet with other people around a table, but I'll tell you what, man, it could be the best thing in your life. Get out of your cocoon, out of your shell. You know, get away from that television set and, and four hours on Facebook and Twitter. Come on now, just get, get a life. Be bold, be strong. Go do something. Well, I'm afraid of failing, but at least you tried. At least you tried. Anybody still with me? Is it okay if I'm honest with you guys? I figure I'm preaching every sermon like it's my last now. I'm living every Sunday like, like it's my last. I pray it gives me a thousand more, but you know, so far, I'm going one at a time, and I'm, I'm blessing God for it. And I'm giving you the message that I go, man, I want to make sure I give him that message. <laughs> I want to make sure that, that there's no blood left on my hands. Because if I don't speak it out, if I'm not strong, if I'm not courageous, there's blood on my hands still. And maybe you're afraid to tell your family what's, what's the right way to go. Maybe you're afraid of, of working through issues. It's time to overcome your fear, and it's a command. It's not an option. Now you might choose, well it is an option, you can choose not to be courageous and strong and therefore wallow in that place. But I'm telling you right now, I'm, I'm speaking for God, it's time for you to be strong and courageous. It's time to progress, someone say amen. amen. Verse seven, but make sure you're very strong. <laughs> he 
doesn't back off at all. He says, don't be a wuss. Be strong. Oh, and by the way, be very strong. What's it going to take to get out of where you are right now? You got to really be strong. And you're going to have to be courageous. And, and change is hard. And overcoming obstacles is hard. I was up at 5 a.m., uh, I think Thursday morning, praying for Andra, Howard, and Clint. She's going through a horrible, horrible physical attack, right? Kind of out of the blue like, I, like my situation was. And, and I'll tell you what, I was up and then I called him a little later. I said, what happened? He said, we just went to a doctor, spent three hours with the doctor, we're getting answers. I said, praise God. I was up at five praying for you guys because you gotta be strong and courageous. And look what verse seven says. Make sure you're very strong and brave. Look at someone say, you're stronger than you think. Do you understand, friends, that you often say, I can't, not you, other friends from the other churches. <laughs> I can't, I'm afraid, I'm not smart enough, I'm not good looking enough. It's time that you go, okay, this is the, this, these are the cards I've been dealt with. And I'm gonna deal with these cards, and I'm gonna play them, I'm gonna bluff, I'm going to be all in. I've already got one life to live. Shava. At any time you can shout that out, it'll probably encourage me. Now, now here's the other little element here. What do, you need to, what do you need to enter the promised land? One, you need courage and strength. And, and if you've got a bunch of naysayers around you, guess what? Get some new friends. Now, I'm telling you. I know people, they can always tell me how it shouldn't happen or why it can't happen or why it didn't happen. I am so sick of that. I've only got one life to live right now. I know there's obstacles. What, what can we do to fix this? What can we do to make another way? What can we do? Let's, let's go for it. So the Bible says be very strong and brave. And then it tells us the second thing. Carefully obey all the law my servant Moses charged you to keep. Do not swerve from it to the right or to the left so you may be successful and prosperous in all you do. It may not say that in your version. It says it in the Hebrew. That you may be successful and prosperous in all you do. Anybody want to be successful and prosperous? Lift up your hands. There is nothing wrong with being successful and prosperous. It's much better than being defeated and broke. Oh. Uh Uh-oh. What are you doing to me? I think you're getting this message. Look what it says here. I've got to obey the law of God. Now, here's the challenge. A lot of churches won't talk about the blood of Jesus. They won't talk about repentance. They won't have altar calls because everything's about pleasing them. But the challenge is that's not biblical. <laughs> Because the Bible says, it says here, obey the law. So I'm sorry, sir, you're not allowed to go on the streets and beat up innocent people. You're not allowed to do that. Sorry about that. There is a law in this country, and there should be laws in our homes and laws in our businesses, and that's the law. And God has laws, but our society doesn't want God's laws. Now it doesn't even want to have common sense laws. Friends, there's a law of sowing and reaping. Trust me, it's a real, some of you just gave your tithes and offerings, trust me, get ready for the harvest. The same is true the opposite way. Everything you do is a seed and a harvest. In Eastern religions, they call it karma. It's a, it's a biblical fact. See, what you learn is there's a law of gravity, there's a, there's a law of, of, of unforgiveness that if, you don't forgive, then God can't forgive you. There's a law. There's a law of purity. Being sexually pure and morally pure. There's laws. The Bible says if you have sex with someone outside of marriage, that you've defiled yourself. That's one of the laws of God. You may not like it. I didn't make it up. Uh-oh, you're getting it. There's a law that says if you married that woman, guess what? She's your baby for the rest of your life. It's not how you feel, you made a choice. And so it makes it more 
precarious that our choices should be great. That's why you have premarital counseling. We want to make sure that everybody makes a great choice. If you've been through the pains of divorce, there's no guilt or condemnation. Now that you're starting over, let's just get it right now. Let's realize there's laws in the world. There's laws. I realized the other day, I had a, a doctor's appointment, and uh, <laughs> you know, I was saying, God, give me revelation. He said, Paul, you put the wrong fuel in your engine. I go, what? God, I work out, I do this, I do that. He says, yeah. He, I said, well, why am I, why has got all that plaque in my artery? What's going on there, what happened? He says, you put the wrong gasoline in your engine. I said, well, what do you mean? He spoke to my mind, he says, Paul, you were like a diesel engine, but you were putting regular gas in there. Or you're putting cheap old gas in there. Paul, there, you laughed about nutrition, you laughed, made jokes about your donuts and all that, but Paul, Unfortunately, you played a role. Because it's easy to say I'm a victim of everything, right? I don't know what happened to my marriage. <laughs> I don't know what happened to my business. I don't know what happened, happened to my body. No, 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 no. We, 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 yeah, the devil's bad. He tried to kill me. I know he did. I, that, however, he's looking for open doors. Through this whole process, I had to go, God, were there any open doors? And I'm clear as day this week, Paul, you, 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 it's not all you, Paul, but your participation was you didn't eat right, and guess what? It created some plaque and some problems. And, and Paul, secondly, you have a generational thing that you inherited, and I tried to break it, but I realized there's a battle going on, and the devil hates me. Anybody still with me? Someone got it. Shava! So I'm claiming God's promises. I'm breaking the curse. I'm walking this, but I'm accepting, I'm accepting my part. So that if you accept your part, you're no longer a victim. You follow his word. We need to make sure we don't use the grace of God as a license to do whatever the heck we want. What does God say about finances and relationships? What does God say about sex and immigration and responsibility, a balanced budget? What does God say about fidelity? See, God's very clear about these things and he actually calls them laws. Now, if you're not a Christian, you don't wanna hear that at all. They wanna get rid of all laws. I was watching an interview the other day and uh, someone said, listen, we don't care about how someone's born, whether they're born with certain parts or other parts. Your identity will shape your sexuality. That's the only thing that matters, not how you're born, not how you're created by God. Your identity shapes your sexuality, so therefore, X, Y, Z. And so the gentleman said something really interesting. He said, well, then is that true for race? So if I say that I'm black today, therefore, I'm black. If I say I'm Hawaiian, which I really want to be, I'm Hawaiian. And so I just read an article, I'm not kidding, a week later, there's a new theory coming out that it's identity that now shapes not only your sexuality, so you're no longer male unless you think you're one, you're no longer female unless you think you're one, you're no longer a black unless you think you're black, and you're no longer Irish if you think, unless you think you're Irish. And so now the new theory is Whatever you think you are makes you what you are. So here's a new article that came out last week that if you're a pedophile, that's now no longer a breaking of the law, it's just sexual preference. I'm not kidding. I've been saying this for years. That's the new article that came out this week, I think in USA Today. Uh, it said that there's a, a massive movement right now that is now gonna redefine whether having sex with children is against the law. Because they're saying, no, no, it's just, it's my identity. My identity draws me to children, therefore it's okay to have sex with children. But see, that's what happens when you get rid of laws. At what point do you stop having laws? At some point, you gotta draw the line somewhere. Now, if you're not a Christian, that moves that tape way over there. And that's why the Bible says if you want to be successful and prosperous, there are laws. And as much as society may hate the laws, we're going to live out the laws of God. Someone say amen to that. So you could be strong and courageous, but you could be a lawless person and you will not be successful or prosperous. You got, see, see this, the, that's what a lot of churches aren't saying right now because they, they want to build a big crowd, but they don't want to build big people. I'm speaking to you right now as your pastor because I want to build big people. 
I want to build a people that build big businesses, big families, and, 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 and are, are generous and kind and godly. Some would say amen. Is it okay that I speak to you like that? What do we say? Unless you want me to lie. Because I, I don't know how many I have left. I hope I have a thousand, like I said, and I pray I have a thousand. I'm declaring that over my life. But I want to leave every Sunday knowing that I gave you 100% the truth. And I'm giving you something that you can munch on for the coming week. And it may not be easy words. It may not be something that's easy because society's going to say, no, no, I can do whatever the heck I want to do. But I'm, not, I'm going to tell you what the Bible says, and, and, and then you're going to have to deal with it. Amen? Amen. And you can tell your friends. Okay, now verse 8, and then we're going to close. Team, come on up. Focus on the word. The Bible says there's four ways to focus on the word, and I need to close with that. I'll, pro- I'll continue next week, and, and we have guests that are coming next week, so we're, it's going to be super fun for them, and we're going to love on them, and we're going to make them feel real special, but I'm still going to preach the word. Verse 8. This law scroll must not leave your lips. You must memorize it day and night so you can carefully obey all that's written. Then you will prosper and you will be successful. This is four things. Number one, don't swerve from it. It says don't go to the right or the left of the word. Find out what the word says and live that, whether it's comfortable or not. Whether you're comfortable or not, say, what does the word say? I want to live that way, and I'm going to get some help to live according to the word, because then I will be prosperous and successful. Number two, go and make sure that the word's on your lips. Memorize that word. Make sure it's on your lips and on your mind. Thirdly, it's got to be on your mind. Speak the word. Declare great things. Make declarations. Memorize it. And finally, obey the word. Do the word. It says here, do not swerve from it to the right or to the left. It says, carefully obey all that's written. Where? In the Word. I've got, you know, of course I have my Bible here that I, people are downloading it for free off of ICLV.com. If you want the Bible online for free, just go to ICLV.com. We'll help you get it. That's free. But I, I, I've got this beautiful leather Bible that I, I use all the time. It's called a vision Bible. 34 notes on how to live out the life of vision. And then, of course, the Bible in, in a, a New King James. It's fabulous. But sometimes I just carry it around with me just to, sometimes I'll put it on my restaurant table just to remind me that I'm a man of the word. Just to, just to declare those around me, what's that? That's a Bible, man. I, I want to live that thing in my life. I, I want it to, I, I don't want to swerve from this thing to the right or left. I remember when I was a new Christian, my brother sent me a Bible. It was a Jerusalem Bible, this thick. And I was embarrassed to carry it around the university campus because I wanted to be cool. I was a Christian, but I wanted to be cool. But I don't, I, don't want, I don't want to be cool anymore. I want, I want God to be pleased. And I want the Bible, I don't want to swerve from this thing to the right or to the left. I want to live this out in my life. And I want to live it out in my marriage and my kids and my grandkids. I want to live it out for you. And if that's you, I want you to stand up and say, man, I want to live that out in my life. I want to live out the Bible in my life. Come on. I, I, El Shabbos, someone's got it again. If you want to claim the Shabbos of God, stand up and just shout out, Shabbos! You want to claim the promises? Don't swerve from this word.